So, what's happening, guys? Welcome to the new beginning for part three. Due to some technical difficulties, whatever reason, don't know if it was during the download to YouTube or GoPro or what, who knows. It's all electronical, magical, you know, some sort of wizardry. I, I don't know. We, anyway, we ended up having to make a new beginning. So, what you're about to see is going to be in the past. Well, it's all going to be in the past. But what you're about to see, what you're seeing now, what you're going to somewhat, what you, did I mention we had to redo the beginning? So anyway, I'm going to show you a few things that I've done with the Mr. T. And then what you're going to see is the cleanup, the waxing, the changing of the fuel filter, Oh my gosh, the fun just never ends with Mr. T. Let me tell you what. So let's walk out here to Mr. T and I'm gonna show you some of the stuff that I've done and then we're gonna magically take you back in time to some of the stuff that's already been done. So let me get this camera reset and we'll go from there. All right, well here he sits in all of his glory. Some things have been done and I'm gonna show you these few things that we've done. New plug wires. We went with new plug wires, we went with a new rotor, and a new distributor cap. Now, we put new plugs in him too, because, man, the old plugs were pretty bad. And I'm going to show you a picture of the plugs, new and old, right up here, maybe here. Also, we cleaned out the bed. Took the old plastic bed liner out of the bed. got a few little rust issues in there not too bad that is the worst one and we're gonna work with that we're gonna use some pour 15 It is a great rust inhibitor paint uh, it's expensive expensive stuff but anyway that's the things just small things that I was going to tell you that we did that we actually told you that I did in the first beginning of part three this is like part two of three the beginning of part two of three and something like that anyway anyway from this point on enjoy the rest of it you're going to see the wash the wax and the fuel filter change Whew. what a nightmare enjoy we'll see you at the end to get all the green funk off because it just don't look right on blue i'm just not down with the green funk not are you down with the green funk Kind of through cleaning as far as the washing of the body and stuff goes but there are some little things that i like to do and i'm going to do that real quick and a lot it has to do with chrome now of course the chrome that we did have was on the back bumper and i took it off and there is some chrome on the front this is the sos pad i can't tell you how many 
bumpers, uh, bicycle rims, car rims, you name it, man, that I have cleaned up with these guys right here. So we're gonna go over the front bumper with this guy right here and get the chrome cleaned up. Now, if it's pitted, there's nothing you can do about that because eventually it's gonna rust again. That little bit of rust will come popping out. But go over it with the old SOS pad again, takes it away, and it don't take no time. It really doesn't. The SOS pad will knock a rough edge off just about anything. How are you? What's that? No, I actually bought it from a guy named Daryl. Daryl? <laughs> yeah. Where do you think you've seen it? <laughs> uh, my old neighbor, he had bought one. And I thought it was his. He kept it in his backyard. This was in his backyard, but he bought it brand new in 1990. Okay, while I was over there cleaning, which it's pretty much done, except for the front bumper, I gotta finish that off. A gentleman showed up here at my house watching and saw that I had the Toyota in the driveway. Well, it just so happens he has a Toyota, an 89, that he's had repainted, and nice wheels and a new bumper and a nice spray-in bed liner, which is all stuff that I wanna do. All right, again, this is Mason. How you doing, Mason? Good. I appreciate you stopping by. Yep. Uh, your truck is gorgeous. Thank you. Um, I, I don't even know where to begin. It's, it's everything that I would like to do to mine, but, yeah. you know, I just, I kind of, I'm a, I hate to use that word. I'm going to use the patina word. Yeah. I like the way mine has. No, I definitely like the patina on there, but this thing, there was no rot or anything, but just all through the bedside was dented up real bad, and dings and dents everywhere and hood surface rust and I wanted to just get rid of everything and had it completely was it originally made. black yep originally oh okay black. well that's good yep, yep. that was so, good it was I know it's a hard paint job to get right but they did a good job with it. Uh, those seats I didn't put those in there but they're from a MR2 All right, well, I would like to thank Mason for stopping by and showing me his truck and making me feel terrible. And, uh, <laughs> but he's given me a lot of ideas, or actually he didn't give me the ideas. I had the ideas, but he's let me see what they look like to visualize the, the bed liner and the black bumper on the back with, with a chrome bumper. I was worried about that and that stuff, but he's got a beautiful truck and it's, I'm, I'm ashamed to look at it really. I don't even want to say, I don't even want to look back at mine now. But anyway, Mason, thank you. Appreciate thank you, you coming much. by, man. Yep, thank nice you. To meet you. And enjoy your truck. Stop yeah. by anytime. Yeah, I'll and, stop uh, by. And see the progress. Yeah, I drive <laughs> by all the time, so I'll stop well, by. I'm here. All right. All right thanks thank a lot, you. man. We'll see you later. All right, take it easy. So anyway, that was awesome. It's it's cool that people come together over stuff like this. I mean, it seemed like it used to be uh, Jeeps. You know, a Jeep thing. You see it all the time. It's a Jeep thing. You wouldn't understand. Well, I've had three Jeeps. I understand. They were cool and I enjoyed them. I'd love to have another one. But evidently, in the Toyota world, it's a Toyota thing. Patina, definition, worn. Worn out, worn slightly, really worn, beat up, ugly, or just plain too cheap to get it painted. Yeah, that sounds good. That's a good definition for patina. Too cheap or broke to get it painted. Works for me. So it's a gorgeous day out here today. It's like 71 or two degrees or something like that. I ordered a new, uh, the temperature sensor for the uh, coolant. Uh, it wouldn't move at all on here. So I ordered a new one, it came in pretty quick and went ahead and put that guy in just a little while ago. I let him sit out here and run for about 30 minutes and she came right on up. After I did that, I decided I was going to wax it. Yes, 
I'm waxing a vehicle that's missing most of its paint. Man, you know, just a good coat of wax over it and maybe the paint will, that's there will last a little bit longer. If I thought that would work, I'd... Never mind. Just disregard that. There's a joke there, but sometimes you just gotta let them go. I'm gonna take the wax off of the truck now. Uh, I already did this one fender right here. It's pretty smooth, actually. A lot of the old tar, not tar, but sap and stuff like that came off. But uh, let's do the rest of the vehicle because I've got the entire thing waxed now and I've got to get it off. It's got to come off. You don't just do things halfway, people. If you wax it, wax it off. Wax on, wax off. We all saw the Karate Kid. You know what Mr. Miyagi would want. Now, as you can see, we've got floor mats. I got these at Ollie's for $16. You can't beat Ollie's. You got to go to Ollie's whenever you can. That one over there I had to cut because you have like a foot rest over there when your uh, left foot isn't clutching. Maybe you're doing some interstate driving where you can rest your foot, but you had to cut that piece out right there in order to make it fit. So anyway, that looks pretty cool. And today I filled the speaker holes. I have bought so much stuff from AutoZone that I had a $20 reward. So I got me some speakers and put in the doors there. Got them all hooked up and screwed in and we've got us some stereo now. Can you believe that? I'm gonna have a vehicle that's got music you can actually hear. So anyway, sun is going down. I'm gonna clean up my stuff and get ready for a Another day tomorrow, and we'll see what we can do with it tomorrow. Finish doing some cleaning. Eventually, we've got to do some rust repair. A few little places, nothing major, nothing major. Got to get it inspected. For those of you who don't get vehicles inspected, and for those of us who do, you know what I'm talking about. It looks like everything is legit. She ought to pass pretty good. I'm going to go over signal lights and headlights and beeping the horn and all that fun stuff, reverse lights. And then we've really got to fill that tank up with some really good gasoline and go for a long ride. Anyway, tomorrow's going to be another day. morning we are on a mission this morning to get the old mr. T up to a friend of mine's house and get on that last little bit of this thing that's really been driving me crazy and that is the fuel filter now my friend Ronnie has a lift in his garage and he's given me the okay to come on up there and he's gonna give me a hand and we're gonna put uh, mr. T up on a lift Pull that right front wheel and try to get in there to that fuel filter. Uh, now, some news that I didn't film or and don't have on here that I, I kind of did behind the scenes. He's all titled in my name now, belongs to me, and I went and got him inspected. Well, I had to drive about seven, ten miles to get him inspected, and I almost didn't get him back home again he was running terrible i mean running bad running worse than my drunk uncle bob during the three-legged race at the family reunion no power skipping backfiring through the exhaust i came home last night got on youtube and looked up a few things that causes those problems one is egr valve well they have a tendency to get really clogged up on these trucks uh, especially on the 22 r's and re's i pulled the egr off and let me tell you how much fun that is. With the being on the engine, the engine being in the truck, woo! Really pushed my buttons on whether or not I'll ever own another Toyota or not. Anyway, I got it off and one of the ports where the vacuum line comes in was completely clogged up. And I mean completely clogged up. 
I couldn't pass a guitar string through it. It was so clogged up. So I got it off the car, got it all cleared out with some fabricating of tools that I had to use to that involved a drill and a, a lawnmower spring. And oh man, it just it was some crazy stuff I built. But got it cleaned out. He's running right now. Got a little bit of a skippy doo to him. I'm just letting him warm up. And hopefully we can get into Ronnie's garage and get that fuel filter changed. So anyway, we're going to see what we can do. Get up there to his house and get this fuel filter changed. So here we go. Ah, I definitely got to come down. Now you said though, it can't go backwards. Let me pull it down and you can move it up and down. Yeah, you'd have to take it all the way to the bottom, right? right I'm bringing it down. Okay, coming down. That sounded like it was coming down on my head. I know. That's in the flattest spot it can get. Is that too, too, too small? Too small, okay. What size do you need? I don't know what size it is. It's a foreign car, man. I don't know what size the stuff is. Everything's in there way in the What does that say on it? I don't know, you've had this since I tools were invented. Three, <laughs> three quarter. Oh. <laughs> I don't think that's going to work. <laughs> How long has it been on here? On there a while, evidently. This is bad, we can't even get the wheel off. The old one is off. I feel like I should have came on and said, you know, like captain's log, Toyota date, whatever today is, February 26th or 7th or whatever it is. Finally got the fuel filter off the truck. This is what a new fuel filter looks like. It's made in China. Hopefully it's compatible. It looks dang near the same. So anyway, the installation process is what we're going to go through now. It goes up there. It goes up there. This is one fuel line. There's another one over there. And you've got two spots in the block where the thing has to screw in. Those two screws, getting them back in the block is what's going to stink. So we're going to do that first and then connect the fuel lines. Or at least, hey, better yet. Make this magnetic, okay? The extension, all right? See, that's why he has Porsches and I've got a 1990 no, Toyota. Smarty. <laughs> Mr. Fancy Pants Lift Boy. <laughs> Just for the record, it went in a lot easier than it came out. Meanwhile, installing my bolt friction tape <laughs> into the, on the head of the, to keep it from, you know what I'm doing. Fuel filter installed. You can kind of see it back there. Man, what a bear. Whew. I'm not really predicting any major changes here. I just don't think that what's wrong with the truck, the way it's running, that this is going to make a difference. But we can cross our fingers and see. That will be on there for whoever the next guy is. This is going to be your forever here. <laughs> There's got to be one You must somewhere. not think that I'm going to live very long. Is this too big? Woo, that's big. That's like a... What is this for? You got it's like Sas got it. this is like Sasquatch's hairbrush. <laughs> well, how much tires? They look good on the outside, though. Yeah, they just sat. My dad always taught me to do a star pattern. That's what I did. Gotcha. That's what I did. I went back and forth like that, and then I just go around it when I'm done. Gotcha. At least I think I did. We'll have to look back at the footage and see if uh, Professor Ronnie. <laughs> Can you pass no, me on my That's not my name. It lets me fight the fuel filter. But, but when I put the lugs on, then it's got to be a certain way. Let's just leave that there. That's kind of like what the kids are doing. <laughs> Aren't the kids doing that now? Uh, yeah, just leave that light out of there like that? That's the new thing? Yeah. Well, see, back when we used to do stuff like that, we got arrested. You get that stuff off there, we're impounding your car. Okay, we're taking these little square doodahs off because the previous owner had a rack that went 
under here that I don't think he can find and since he can't find it I'm not keeping it on there because I don't need it. That's never coming off again. It looks loose. Well that's the back one. Yeah. You know, that, you know what that hook's there for on a Toyota don't you? For pulling everybody else out of the mud that got stuck. I thought it had a hook on the front because you could tie a line to the back and troll with it and use it as a lure. <laughs> <laughs> that's in case you want to add a, another bait. Got the lights out, we got the tools out, everything. Tools screwed. out, lights out, wheels on. Let's just for giggles, if you don't mind, roll it into outside since we've dealt with fuel. Okay. In case something does happen, I don't want to burn my garage down. It's a little tiny, it would only be a small fire. Okay, first start after fuel filter, take one. Okay, no fires. No fires, we did good. It's a little toasty, but we're gonna See if we can clear that up. Still don't think it's the issue with the way it runs. But we're doing everything we can to make it better. Financially, everything we can. I just wish I could drive it somewhere and go fix this. But I don't know that I've ever been able to do that. Yeah, I might need to go buy a new distributor cap. There you go. Nice and gold colored now. We're going to try to sand down the points inside the uh, distributor cap just a little bit, the points of contact, because they're really pretty bad. And, I, and this cap looked brand new, but it's not. So probably going to buy a new cap, but for right now, we're going to try to clean it up just a little bit. So we are done. It's really not running much better. Uh, there's something else here. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's fuel injectors, a vacuum issue. I'm not sure. I'm uh, dealing with a foreign vehicle to me and you know with booger it'd be no problem I could figure this out in 10 seconds and take care of it but we're gonna go for a new distributor cap and maybe even some new wires don't feel like that's the issue either but we're actually moving a little better than we did yesterday when we uh, after we got it inspected <laughs> that was seriously a nightmare because I was about seven to ten miles from home and didn't think it was coming home so anyway, I don't know if y'all can see me or not, but this is going to be the end of part three. Looks like with this little fella, there's always going to be a part something. So thank y'all for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Going to go get some more parts. Till next time, somebody go fishing for me, please. Anybody. <laughs>